Hello everyone. Welcome back to Love Listens Lounge, the coziest, most relatable corner of YouTube dedicated to navigating the wild world of love and relationships. For all my new viewers, hey, stop scrolling. You're going to want to hear this. Today, we're discussing the topic that's unfortunately pretty universal, infidelity, and how it specifically affects us ladies. Because let's be real, it hits different for us. We're talking about the emotional fallout, the trust issues, the whole shebang. So grab your comfiest blanket, your favorite snacks, because you're going to need it. Let's get real, let's get vulnerable, and let's unpack this together. First things first, let's talk about the initial emotional explosion that happens when you find out you've been cheated on. It's like one minute you're scrolling through Instagram, living your best life, and the next minute, bam! your entire world is flipped completely upside down. And the emotions? Oh honey, buckle up because you're in for a wild ride. We're talking about the kind of betrayal that makes you question everything you thought you knew. It's like someone took your heart, threw it in a blender with their dirty socks and hit the puree button. You're gonna feel sad, obviously. Like ugly cry in your pajamas while binge eating ice cream kind of sad. Then there's the anger, which let's be honest, is totally justified. You want to scream, you want to throw things, you might even want to key their car a little bit. Don't worry, I'm not judging. We've all been there. And then, just when you think you've ridden the wave of one emotion, another one crashes over you. It's exhausting, it's confusing, and it's totally okay to feel all of it. But here's the thing, you're not alone. Literally, like millions of women have gone through this exact same thing and they've come out on the other side stronger and more amazing than ever. So let yourself feel everything, cry it out, punch a pillow, whatever you need to do. But remember, this is just a chapter, not the whole story. Now let's talk about trust, or should I say the lack thereof. After being cheated on, trusting anyone, especially in romantic relationships, can feel as impossible as finding a decent avocado at the grocery store. You start questioning everything. Did he actually like my new haircut? Was he really working late? Was that his real laugh or was he secretly mocking me this whole time? It's exhausting. And the worst part? This lack of trust can seep into other areas of your life too. You might find yourself doubting your friends, your family, even your dog. Like, is Sparky actually happy to see me? Or is he just after my leftover pizza crust? It's like this dark cloud of suspicion follows you everywhere. And it can be really tough to shake. Rebuilding trust, both in yourself and in others, takes time, patience, and a whole lot of self-love. It's not about forgetting what happened but learning to move forward with a better understanding of your own boundaries and what you deserve in a relationship. And for those of you thinking, you just don't get it. I'll never trust anyone again. Listen, I get it. It's easy to feel that way after being hurt, but closing yourself off completely, that's just giving your ex power over your future happiness. And trust me, they don't deserve that kind of rent-free space in your head. Okay, let's talk about the real victim in all of this, your self-esteem. Because let's be real, being cheated on can feel like a direct hit to your ego. It's so easy to fall into the trap of self-blame, to start picking apart everything about yourself, wondering what you could have done differently. Was I not pretty enough? Funny enough? Did I not make enough avocado toast? Spoiler alert, it was never about the avocado toast. This is where things get really tricky because rebuilding your self-esteem after infidelity is like putting together a puzzle, but someone lost half the pieces and the other half smell vaguely of betrayal and regret. But here's the thing, your worth, your value, your queen energy, none of that is determined by someone else's actions, not even your cheating exes. This is the time to reconnect with yourself, to rediscover all the amazing things that make you you. Hit the gym, take up a new hobby, reconnect with your friends, or just spend some quality time alone with yourself and a giant tub of ice cream. Remember, self-love isn't selfish, it's essential. And you, my friend, 
deserve all the love in the world, especially from yourself. Okay, let's talk about the awkward elephant in the room, or should I say, the awkward ex in your friend group. Because infidelity doesn't just impact your relationship, it can also throw a major wrench into your social life. Suddenly, every hangout, every party, every brunch date becomes a minefield of potential awkward encounters. Do you invite them both? Do you pick sides? Do you just stay home with your cat and binge watch reality TV? Honestly, there's no right or wrong answer here. It all depends on your specific situation and what you're comfortable with. But communication is key. Talk to your friends, let them know how you're feeling, and don't be afraid to set boundaries. And if you do bump into your ex, hold your head high, channel your inner Beyonce, and remember you are a queen. And they are, well, let's just say they're not winning any awards for best decision maker of the year. This is also a good time to lean on your friends for support. They're your squad, your ride or dies, your partners in crime, and they're there to listen, offer advice, and remind you that you're not alone in this. Plus, nothing says I'm over it like a girl's night out with your besties, right? Okay, let's get real for a second. Healing from infidelity takes time. It's not like a bad cold where you pop a few vitamin C's and you're good to go. This is like full-on emotional surgery, and the recovery process can be long and sometimes messy. You might have good days and bad days, moments of clarity, and moments where you just want to crawl back into bed with a pint of Ben and Jerry's and ignore the world. And that's okay. The important thing is to be kind to yourself. Don't try to rush the healing process, and don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Whether it's talking to a therapist, joining a support group, or just venting to a trusted friend, there are resources available to help you through this. Remember, healing isn't linear. It's a journey, not a destination. There will be bumps in the road, wrong turns, and maybe even a few detours along the way. But eventually, you'll reach your destination, a place of self-love, self-acceptance, and maybe even a little bit of wisdom. And when you do finally reach that point, you'll realize that this experience, as painful as it was, has actually made you stronger, wiser, and more resilient than ever before. Whew! We covered a lot today, didn't we? Infidelity is a tough topic, but it's important to talk about it. Remember, you're not alone in this. So tell me, have you ever experienced infidelity? How did you cope? Share your story in the comments below. Let's create a safe space for each other. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe to my channel for more love lessons and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Oh, and as always, thank you for watching. Stay strong, stay beautiful, and I'll see you in my next video.